with more than 300,000 Nissan Leaf electric cars on the road, some more than six years old, battery degradation is becoming more and more of an issue. The different rates of capacity loss are a topic of much discussion among Leaf owners, but it now seems likely that Nissan's choice of passive air cooling rather than active liquid cooling has contributed to faster capacity loss than in GM or Tesla electric cars. Now Nissan has announced a new option for Leaf owners, one that's considerably less expensive than buying a new battery pack off the shelf for an aging Leaf. Last Monday, Nissan Japan announced that owners of the Leaf electric car in that country could trade in their old, reduced capacity battery packs for refurbished replacement batteries. The program isn't free, exchange costs will start at 300,000 yen, about $2,830 for remanufactured 24 kWh batteries used in 2011-2015 Leafs, and some 2016 models as well. Nissan says it hopes to expand its lineup of refurbished packs, presumably meaning to the larger 30 kWh packs used in 2016 and 2017 Leafs. That's substantially lower than the costs of new replacement batteries, 650,000 yen, about $6,130 for 24 kWh packs. 800,000 yen, about $7,540 for 30 kWh packs. And 820,000 yen, about $7,730 for the latest 40 kWh packs used in the 2018 Nissan LEAF. The trade-in program will start in May, and thus far it's limited to LEAF owners within Japan. The old LEAF battery packs will be inspected and refurbished as required to replace defective cells and modules by 4R Energy Corporation, a joint venture between the car maker and giant Japanese trading company Sumitomo. While used electric car batteries are expected to hold value on the secondary market for energy storage and other uses, Nissan has a different goal in mind. In a statement, the company said that by reclaiming and refurbishing used battery packs, it can not only lower the cost of battery replacements but also heighten the used car value of electric vehicles. That will, the company said, make owning electric cars more appealing and lead to greater sales for the zero-emission vehicles that will reduce carbon dioxide emissions associated with personal transportation. Green Car Reports reached out to Nissan North America for comment on the announcement and its relevance to North American customers, and received the following statement from its EV communications manager, Jeff Wondell. He said, while we're always looking at new ways to bring value to our customers, currently we don't have any announcement to make at this time regarding a similar program for the U.S. The new design isn't much of a giveaway, even though the 2019 Forester switches to the Subaru Global platform that made its debut on the 2017 Impreza. One way to tell you're driving the fifth generation of this SUV icon is to check your calendar to see if it's autumn of 2018, when it goes on sale. Here are a five more clues 1. The new Forester Sport. It's an appearance package with black grille and 18-inch wheels and other trim, with orange accents on top of that. There's also a dual-function X mode to limit slipping wheels under various road surface conditions, and SI Drive adding a 7-step manual mode to the Lean Artronic CVT, no more manual option for the new Forester. SI Drive lets you choose between Intelligent Mode and Sport Sharp Mode for the shifting algorithm. Two. It's watching you if you spring for the top trim touring model, which adds to the standard EyeSight driver assist a facial recognition camera that can tell if you're asleep at the wheel. The camera is in the top middle of the center stack, and can tell the car to come to a complete stop if the driver is not awake. 3. It has more power, better gas mileage. Well, a bit of both, anyway. The updated 2.5-liter H4 gets gas direct injection, with 12 more ponies and 2 more pound-feet, 
to 182 horsepower and 176 pounds FT auto stop start also with standard, and Subaru expects a maximum EPA fuel economy number of 33 mpg highway, 1 mpg better than the outgoing model. 4. Cargo capacity is up by 1.9 cubic feet. Total cargo capacity with the 60-40 rear seat down is 76.1 cubic feet. 5. Subaru used cool tricks to make the Forester feel roomier. For example, the tail lumps have been moved out and to the side of the rear of the body, so as not to intrude into the tailgate opening. Loading and unloading the cargo space will be easier. With pressure escalating after one of the worst weeks in its almost 15-year history, Tesla Incorporated raced to manufacture and deliver its mission-critical Model 3 sedan to burnish the numbers it's about to report to rattled investors. Tesla's Fremont, California, delivery hub was packed with people Saturday evening as the last hours of the quarter drew to a close. Red couches and tall white tables were set up outside, a DJ played music and a truck selling Vietnamese food was on hand. Behind the scenes, a company that struggled to figure out how to mass manufacture cars implored workers to get production on track and prove the doubters wrong. The skeptics are getting louder after last week. The electric car maker led by Elon Musk came under regulatory scrutiny for the second crash this year involving Tesla's driver assistant system autopilot, the latest of which resulted in a fatality. Moody's Investor Service downgraded the company's credit rating further into junk, citing the combination of production issues and mounting obligations that could necessitate a more than $2 billion capital raise and to avoid running out of cash. Gene Munster, a managing partner at venture capital firm Loop Ventures who's been bullish on the carmaker, in a report Thursday after the company announced it would have to repair a power steering issue with the Model S wrote, Tesla is testing our patience. When we heard the recall news tonight we asked ourselves, do we still believe in this story? Musk first unveiled the Model 3 on March 31, 2016, and hundreds of thousands of consumers have placed $1,000 deposits for the sedan that's emblematic of the chief executive officer's bet that electric cars can have mainstream appeal. From the looks of social media posts by customers who took delivery of their Model 3 over the holiday weekend, the company still maintains an army of true believers. Amanda Bell, a software developer in Nashville, wrote Saturday on Twitter, two years ago to the day, I put down a deposit on a car I'd never even seen before. Today, I picked up my dream car. Since starting Model 3 production in July of last year, Tesla has pushed back production goals for the car several times, citing issues with battery output and automating its assembly lines. The company forecast back in January that it would likely end the first quarter making about 2,500 units of the car a week. Tesla reports production and deliveries results within a few days of each quarter ending. Bloomberg is tracking the Model 3 rollout with an experimental tool that estimates production using vehicle identification numbers. The tracker estimates that Tesla is building about 1,190 Model 3s a week as of Sunday, though that figure may not capture a last-minute burst in output. Analysts are projecting total deliveries for the quarter of about 8,800 units, the average of seven estimates. Bloomberg's Model 3 tracker estimates Tesla may have produced almost 9,300 Model 3 sedans in the quarter. The tracker shows an increase in production in the last few weeks as Tesla invited a limited number of workers from the Model S and Model X factory lines to volunteer to work on the Model 3. Heading into the final week of March, Doug Field, Senior Vice President of Engineering, urged workers to safely ramp up output to more than 300 vehicles a day and to prove a bunch of haters wrong. Barclays PLC analyst Brian Johnson has warned clients to watch out for a potential burst rate bear trap, in which Tesla beats Wall Street's lowered projections for Model 3 deliveries. 
He estimates Tesla is producing 1,500 to 1,700 units of the Model 3 each week. Johnson wrote in a report Thursday, We think it's possible Tesla may have stockpiled batteries amid Fremont downtime, allowing production to be higher in the final week. Any such beat is unlikely to be sustainable, and questions remain on Tesla's ability to sustainably reach its production goals. Safety concerns about Tesla's autopilot are now deepening as the company faces a pileup of other challenges. The National Transportation Safety Board is investigating a fatal Model X crash that occurred March 23 near Mountain View. Tesla published a blog post late Friday to announce that the driver involved in the crash had engaged the driver assistance system and didn't have his hands on the steering wheel for six seconds before colliding with a highway divider, despite receiving several visual and one audible warnings earlier. Brian Walker Smith, a University of South Carolina law professor who studies self-driving cars, said in an email, this is another potential illustration of the mushy middle of automation. Partial automation systems such as Tesla's autopilot work unless and until they don't, and there will be speculation and research about their safety. Moody's downgraded Tesla's corporate family rating last week to B3, six levels into junk, sending the company's unsecured bonds to all-time lows. Late Thursday, the carmaker recalled 123,000 Albanian Lex Model S cars built before April 2016 to retrofit a power steering component. Still, the answer to whether Munster of Loop Ventures still believes in Tesla is yes. Munster said, the company is uniquely positioned to capitalize on a dramatic shift in the auto industry, as well as to innovate in both EV and autonomy, and usher in a new paradigm of manufacturing efficiencies.